when consumers make decisions, they use one of three different types of processes. So the first one is cognitive, the second one is habitual, and the third one is effective. So this is why it is important to understand your consumers and their decision-making process when they're purchasing your products and the idea or the steps that they go through while they make this purchase. The first one is cognitive, which is a deliberate rational sequential, meaning that they actually take the time. It's usually more expensive products. They're going to research it. They think it through. There's a lot of thinking going on in the process so that they do not make a mistake. The, the fear or the risk is oftentimes much higher than a normal product that they would buy, which is habitual, which is a product that you buy regularly. You often consume it. It's like going to the supermarket. There's generally little to no actual research going into the purchase. You just choose it because you've already bought it multiple times in the past and you believe the risk is much less or even none at all. And the final one is effective, which is emotional buying. Emotional buying is what brands really try to push a lot when they use like influencer marketing to show that you are sort of missing out and so that you become emotionally attached to these brands and then you will purchase them more often. So low involvement purchases are generally habitual purchases which we make oftentimes and we have purchased them in the past and so we don't put any time or energy into researching them an easy way to understand the difference between low involvement and high involvement is by putting a dollar amount on it. The more expensive the product becomes, the more we spend researching that product to make sure that we purchase the correct product. So a low involvement product could be like going to the supermarket, buying a bottle of water, going to a fast food restaurant. A high involvement purchase would be something along the lines of buying a new smartphone or buying a new TV or a car or a house, things that are much more expensive and so we spend a lot more time researching them. One of the unique things about purchasing products that marketers have to take into effect and they have to really think about the process that you're going through or their consumers are going through when they buy their products are situational influences because it's not always easy to control the situation that people are in. So we have the purchase tax, the purpose. Why are they buying this product? Are they buying it for themselves? Are they buying it for someone else? What is it, how is it going to actually be used? Is it going to be used that we think it's going to be used or is it going to be used something different? Social surroundings is a huge situation. When you go shopping by yourself or with your family or with your friends, the way that you shop is very different. The amount of time you spend per store is going to change depending on who you are with. It also has to do with if you're with children, people generally shop much quicker. If they're alone, they're going to they're going to maybe take more time to look at products. If they're with friends, they could take even longer because it becomes a social setting. Physical surroundings is another very big one. When we feel very crowded in our space, our personal space is intruded upon, we will hurry and we'll quicken our shopping experience because we are uncomfortable and we will want to leave. And so this is why stores try to give you more room and let you feel better about the area that you're in. You don't like to be bumped. People don't want to be touched when they're shopping. They want to have their space. They want to feel comfortable. They maybe want to have somewhere to sit, have a coffee or something like that. All of this is very, very important. Smells are very important. The cleanliness or the organization of the store is also very important. And then the next one is temporal effects, which is time is how rushed you're in. The reason a convenience store or a a pop machine can charge more money than something like Costco is because it's convenience. We will spend an extra dollar on a Coke out of a vending machine than we will at a Costco because we don't have to go anywhere. It's right in front of us. And the last one is mood. Think about how your shopping changes depending on your mood. If you're happy and you're in a great mood, you take your time, you kind of float around the store, you look at all the different products, you read them, you touch them, you try them, and then you find something that you enjoy. If you're in a bad mood, you speed in, you buy it, you speed out. So mood is very, very important. And understanding these helps marketers understand their consumers. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. You can read about this on the slide. It's just something that comes up regularly in marketing classes and many other classes to better understand your consumers and the process that they go through when they're buying their products. Physiological influences, so personality and the versus self-concept. The personality is, is how we think about things. One way to think about personality is the type, are we an aggressive person? Are we a passive person? 
you know, are we kind of humorous? Are we um, studious? Like the different types of personality we have. One unique thing to remember about personality traits is it's usually something that's hereditary and something that we get and develop as a very young person. And as we get older, it's much, much more difficult to change your personality. People's personalities don't change very much as they get older. Self-concept is how we think other people view ourselves. Anyone who has spent five minutes on Instagram understands that every influencer looks like they have the most perfect life. They're sitting on the beach and all these tropical places with their computer and they're working and they're drinking, you know, pina coladas and it's so amazing and wonderful. But you don't actually see the backside of that. You don't see the photos edited. You don't see the stresses that they had. And so it gives us an, a self-concept that our, our lives are not as good as theirs.